And then now I got to ask you about psychedelics. What do you think about psychedelics as um, is it kind of substituting one drug for another drug for you? Is it a little bit different? I see a lot of microdosing out there mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. for addiction. What do you think? Well, I think that um, it's really important for people to understand that the studies that are happening now are looking at psychedelics as an adjunct to psychotherapy. Right. So there's no study that I'm aware of that, uh, I mean, ketamine, some people would argue that's, that's not a psychedelic. A lot of different things are now being lumped, lumped together, MDMA, mm -hmm. uh, ketamine, uh, psilocybin, sometimes that's all lumped together as psychedelics. But in general, when we think of classic psychedelics like psilocybin, that's currently being researched as an adjunct or in addition to psychotherapy as a way to augment the therapeutic alliance. Right. It's not being looked at, uh, as far as I know, as a treatment in and of itself. And yeah. the evidence that we have is very, very preliminary. Mm -hmm. And we don't yet have enough good evidence on the risks. So many of these studies underreport the risks or don't even ask participants about risks at all, or, mm -hmm. or le even leave out some of the risk associated data. And there are a lot of risks with psychedelics. Sure. There's the risk of self harm, suicidality, psychosis, extreme emotion dysregulation, um, persistent perceptual disturbances. So these are not low risk drugs. And the problem is that now there's way more hype well beyond the evidence. Mm -hmm. People don't have an appreciation for the potential significant risks, including the risk of death. Mm -hmm. you know, so I know of people who have, while they're having a trip, ended their own lives or engaged, had an accident that never would have, that ended their life, that never would have happened had they not been under the influence. So these are, these are you know, potentially highly risky drugs with no reliable evidence to date of therapeutic benefit independent of psychotherapy. And even in the context of adjunctive psycho, you know, being an adjunct to psychotherapy, these are small short-term studies for the most part with not very robust uh, control groups. It's very hard to have a placebo group for a psychedelic because everybody knows who's on psychedelics and, right. you know, who, who, and who isn't. So it's just, it's, it's concerning to see, you know, like you said, you know, young people out there buying little capsules online from Amazon and filling them with you know, their own cocktail of psychedelics because they want to self-treat depression or anxiety. It's just, it's, I'm just so frightened, you know, about the ways in which yeah. the, the I, evidence just has completely outstripped yeah. or that the usage has outstripped the evidence. Yeah. I think there's a lot of um, extrapolating evidence like the, the, P, the MDMA PTSD uh, evidence I think is pretty significant um, specifically for PTSD, but there's people that are extrapolating studies and just generalizing it to like, okay, well, if it worked for PTSD, right, then it might work for my addiction and so on and so forth, right? But, you know, obviously that's not the case. But I think people just really want help for their issues. Sure. Right? Like, especially when it comes to addiction, it's just such a difficult thing to navigate. Um, I think people just really want help and really want to get better. You know? Of course, you know, and, and, and there's no doubt that we're in a mental health crisis, but there's a real danger of looking for kind of the magic remedy to address our mental health crisis. Um, if there's insufficient evidence to support that remedy, because frankly, that's what happened with the opioid epidemic, right? We, we have a chronic pain crisis in this country and pharmaceutical industry, the opioid pharmaceutical industry said, you know, how can you deny patients with pain the right to access to right, opioids? Right. And so, you know, doctors were in large part shamed into prescribing more opioids. And I'm concerned now that we're seeing legislative action to loosen access to psychedelics as a way to address our mental health crisis. Right. But if we don't have adequate evidence showing that the benefits outweigh the harms, then, you know, will we, will, will we look back 20 years and say, oh my goodness, 
uh, you know, we shouldn't have made those drugs more accessible. Yeah. If we had known now what, what, if we had known then what we know now, we wouldn't have uh, legalized uh, these agents. So yeah. just, an interesting study just came out for acute lower back pain that opioids are not any better than placebo for acute lower mm -hmm. back pain, which right. I thought was interesting. Just throw that out. You should check out the study if you're watching. Um, right. And then I think for the legalization of cannabis too, like a big, for the advocacy groups, like a big thing with the, with uh, legalizing cannabis was that it can help with pain and it can, it'll decrease the opioid epidemic in California. But um, studies initially, sh uh, initially showed that maybe that was the case. They prolonged those studies a few years and they found that no, didn't make any difference. 